This video will go through the integration between the wind load generator tool and Structural 3D. Subsequently, in this video we will be highlighting the integration and not talking about how to use the wind load generator tool itself. If you want to learn more about the generation of the loads, please check out our software documentation about the wind load generator. To calculate an integrated wind load, go to area loads and click on the red load generator button. Well, you can see here I, I've been in the load generator before, so we'll click reset. Uh, when you click on the, the red button, you'll see this window. So you want to pick the design code you want to uh, design with. And here you can see the integrated version of the wind load tool. So over here is our structure 3D model of a warehouse. And then over here is the basically the exact same screen that you would go through if you were to uh, generate a wind load uh, in the standalone module. So the workflow is exactly the same. Uh, make sure you input all the requi required fields. We'll just kind of breeze through that. When you move over to the building data, we need to calculate the pressure on the building. So when you pick a type of structure, you'll see that the uh, the building will show up here and you'll notice that the solver is actually going to try and um, identify all of these uh, values of the of the building itself. So all of the parameters such as length, width, mean, roof height, pitch angle, um, and we'll make this closed. And you see it also recognizes the floors as well. So um, the first height of the, of, the, of the roof here at the eave is 15 feet and then at the ridge it's 20 so it's recognizing recognizing those as levels but since we don't have any levels we don't really need to worry about these if you are designing a structure with floors you definitely need uh, want to put in the uh, rows for the for the different floors of your structure i do want to point out that once a structure gets more and more complicated uh, the, the the system may not have uh, it may not identify all of these exactly correct especially if you have um, something that is uh, very very weird in geometry or, or something like that so when you're ready and you're satisfied with all the input fields, come up here and click on Generate Wind Load, like you would in the standalone version. And you'll see that all of our pressures are generated here, just like in the standalone version, as I mentioned, but then they're automatically applied to the model itself. So we'll turn down the scale here. So in this screen, you'll be able to toggle off and on any of the four cases and use any of the visibility settings within Structure 3D while you're still uh, manipulating the load. So if we wanted to turn off some of the cases here, you can see that now this is just a single load case of the loads that we just generated. Going back to the results, you will see that the solver will attempt to find the bounds of the pressure areas given by the code. So in this case, it is, it's identifying the windward and the leeward walls with nodes shown, similar to how you would apply a normal area load. So I would recommend reading the software documentation on area and wind loads because the order of these nodes uh, does matter and will follow the input syntax of the quote unquote column wind loads, which are applied uh, individually in S3D. And then actually, if you were to, when we back out of this, you'll see that each one of these loads applied is in an individual column wind load. So scrolling down, you'll see that the uh, software did its best uh, approximations on what these regions were, and you uh, can definitely go through and, and uh, check those. But there are some times where you know, the structure may not be um, exact enough or anything like that. And there may be some, uh, you know, some node ID fields that are that are empty. And the way you go around this is you can simply type in the values for this. And then similarly, you can adjust or edit any of these node IDs. So really, once you um, generate the wind pressures, you can um, manipulate these regions to be whatever you want them to be, um, which is probably more common with a, uh, a more difficult structure. So I'll note this again, but uh, as the structure become, becomes more complex, the solver will you know, try to recognize all the different extents of each wall, but it won't always be a perfect fit. So uh, all of these node extents, um, make sure to check over them and, and apply them and change them as you wish. So X out of the load generator. Now you can see that all of these loads are now just inside of the model itself. So you have four different load cases of all the different wind loads that you have. And then all of those loads, you'd want to go into your load groups and then apply those load groups. And then you'd want to um, assign each of those load groups a case. So um, automatically, the, the way that it, the integrated load generator works is that it'll automatically apply them as wind loads. 
like I mentioned before, when you show, I'll show the loads here. Um, you can edit any singular load that you see here. So if you go to your area loads and you go to your um, data sheet, you'll notice that all of the loads here are column wind loads. That's basically what the integrated version is doing is it's taking those pressures and it's turning them into a singular column wind load for each of those regions. Um, so any of these values you can go in and change just like with any other area load. If you want to edit all the loads at once or you just need to adjust some site or building parameters, you can always go back to the load generator after you've applied the loads the first time. So as kind of what was shown in the, in the first couple seconds of the video, go back to area loads, click on load generator, and you'll be prompted with this window. So basically what uh, you'll have, you have two choices, whether or not you want to reset your parameters or you want to use previous data. If you reset those parameters, it'll erase all of the site and building data. But we'll, we'll go to use previous data expand this out a bit and now you're back into this um, window that we saw before so you can go back in the building data and adjust that or you can go into the site data and adjust that um, again when you need when you go back you can also uh, generate the the site data reports as well as the um, pressure reports as well just like you can from the standalone module so we'll X out of that and so at this point we've now cal calculated um, wind loads for an entire structure uh, and you haven't had to do any other hand calculations or, or any other calculations involving that. And with that, that'll wrap up this short tutorial video about the integration of loads from the wind load generator into a real-life structural 3D model.